Welcome to RE. We're the first two letters that we're going to focus on in our next in our series is R and E. Words that begin with the letters R and E, such as reconnect, relationships, resurrection, maybe even relocate. We don't know yet, but we're going to be talking about the words R E. Today we're going to be focused on the word reconnect. Many of us have gone through the last pandemic of 2020 and are, have been told, don't touch anybody, don't see anybody, don't go anywhere. And we're now coming out of that and we're forming our own basis of how do we reconnect with each other, with our loved ones, and with God. And today we're going to focus on what does God say about, in Scripture, about reconnecting and being a part, uh, a part of our lives, and we in turn being a part of everybody else's life as well. So as we go through reconnect, we look at how many times over the course of this past year again we've been told not to. Why have we been told not to? And how has that stunted our growth in relationships with other people? As, as we can continue to come back out of this, we as a group are reconnecting with people. We see it all around us right now. People that are playing on playgrounds and people that are having lunch. People that are getting together just for social activities. And they're going, man, it is so good to see your face again. That is what God built it up to be. God said, let's reconnect. Reconnect with me as well is what he's saying. In churches, in many churches right now, we're finding it very, very difficult because we have been uh, being focused online for so long that we may have lost how to reconnect with people. And now we're getting ready to come back into churches together and worship God together. And we're going to reconnect together. So now we're going to see how God reconnects with us. We're going to look into a passage of scripture in Romans 12. Romans 12, 4 through 6, in which Jesus is talking about how we get reconnected with each other as a church, as a whole, as a body. He says, in this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts of Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. So each of us are a part of the body of Christ. Each of us has a talent and a gift. Each of us has the responsibility of reconnecting and being a part of the church. So now how do we do that? He says here to not to do it enviously. Don't wanna be somebody else. Don't wanna be somebody that you're not. See, so many times in life we go through trying to be somebody else. And Jesus is saying, don't do that. Be yourself, reconnect. If it's a smile, it's the best thing you've got, then give it. If it's, if it's being a, a bicyclist or a runner, go do it with, with God's permission of doing it. Inside the church, if it's, if it's leading a Bible study or being a part of a group and reconnecting, it's awesome. If, if making food and is, is something that you enjoy doing, then go do it. But don't try to be something that you're not. That's the cool part about reconnecting. We get to go figure out what everybody else, pre-COVID, we kind of had an idea. And during COVID, all we heard of, we want to get back to normal. Well, what if normal, this new normal, is different, especially when it comes to reconnecting? So today, maybe we just experience how we can reconnect with God. What, how, and how has God reconnected us to Him? That's a question that I have for you today. How has God reconnected you in your spiritual walk starting right now? Maybe this is the first time you're ever viewing something like this. So you're being reconnected right now without really even knowing it. Maybe 
you've had different things going on in your life in which over the course of the last year, you felt, I have to reconnect with God. Now you get that opportunity. Reconnection in the church is very vital to the growth of God's church here on earth. Be a part of it. Be a part of a great revival. That's one we're going to be going over on that RE, revival. Be a part of the revival by reconnecting and getting connected to other people for the body of Christ. Hey everybody, welcome to worship. So glad that you are with us on our second week of relaunch. We are, uh, we're feeling the Holy Spirit moving throughout our community, throughout our church. I'm hoping that you're feeling it in, within yourself as we get ready to continue to relaunch God's church back into community and back into ourselves. Pastor Troy Mercil here with you from First Washington United Methodist Church. So glad that you're with us again today. If this is your first time visiting with us, so happy that you have uh, found us to worship with today. If this is not your first time, if you're on here multiple times, so glad that you are back. We are, I tell you what, I am so excited about today's message that we're going to be talking about uh, because we have uh, dedicated five weeks to five important places in our lives in which we can continually get better, strive to get better, and uh, that is going to relaunch God's church back into the community. But before we do, I, I, before we get to the message part of things, I have a few announcements. As we said, this is relaunch week. Relaunch week is going to be August 9th through the 15th. A lot of uh, ministry and mission is going to happen this week, uh, starting tomorrow with a, a 24 hours of prayer. If you have your time slot, awesome. All 24 hours are filled online. But if, if you want to pray, if you want to find that one hour of time just to pray, I, I sent a thing to our live uh, in-person church uh, last week, uh, sent out a request. If those spots are taken, find a spot in there that works for you. Take an hour of time. I, we want to see what a praying church looks like and how God is going to work through a praying church. So again, if you ha didn't get the opportunity of putting yourself in a time slot and think, oh man, I wish I would have been able to do that, you still have that opportunity. Just write it down someplace. This is the time I'm going to pray tomorrow and just go for an hour of just being with the Lord, okay? And then uh, we have several different prayer walks. You can go to our website and find all this information, but several different prayer walks that are gonna begin at 8.30 a.m around the community. Uh, each day we're going to have a different location of where we're going to be. So we would love for you, if you're in this area and you want to participate in a prayer walk, it's from 8.30, begins at 8.30. We don't know how long it's going to go, probably about an hour, uh, but uh, we're going to be wrapping people in our community with prayer. Also, on Tuesday evening, we've just added this part of our ministry and mission. Uh, Tim Azell from Channel 2 is going to be in our worship space from 6 to 7 p.m. And, and he and I are going to be doing a, an interview uh, type deal in which we're going to talk about his testimony in his faith. He is a pastor of a church in South County. Uh, we're going to be talking about all things. Uh, if you've ever watched Tim on the news or uh, what he does as far as on the news, he's a fantastic person, great individual. We would love for you to be a part of that on, uh, on Tuesday. Okay, so that's Tuesday evening from 6 to 7 p.m. We also have some things going on in the community on, on Wednesday evening, on Thursday, on Friday evening. We have a, a great opportunity to um, be a part of the, uh, it's going to be at Cinema One Plus. We're going to be showing Back to the Future on Friday evening. And then Hope Night is on Saturday evening. Again, all this information is on the website. Lots of mission, lots of ministry. We would love for you to participate. Uh, like I said, I'm excited about the, what God has in store for us this coming week. So I hope that you are as well. Great opportunity to give to the mission and ministries. Also, while you're on that website, go to the Give tab all the way to the far right. Follow the prompts. You can give a one-time gift, a multiple gift. You can set up your giving. Uh, give with a joyful heart, knowing that whatever your financial gifts that you're giving to this church 
are going to go far in the outreach into this community. Now I just ask that you go with us in, in a time of prayer as we get ready to talk about presence. Okay, we're talking about five different places in which we can get better and five different places in which we can expand our horizons on over the course of the next five weeks as we talk about relaunch. That is prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And today we're going to be focused in on presence. So I just ask that you go to the Lord in prayer with me today. Gracious God, I thank you so much for the, all the activity, all the things that are going on within our church and within our community and, and within ourselves. God, we, we believe that you are ready for a revival, and Lord, we are happy to participate in that revival of ourselves, of our church, of our community. Lord, we just ask that as we get ready to move forward today, that you, you place us in positions in, in ways in which we can be vessels, used as vessels of, of prayer, of presence, uh, taking our gifts and using those in the community, of serving other people and witnessing to others your love, your grace, your mercy, your peace. God, I just ask that today you, you surround us with so much love and send us forward, send us out into a community telling us, hey, this is what you can do in community today. We thank you so much for your son, Jesus, who came to us and taught us a prayer, who was present within our lives and is still present today. And when asked, how do we pray, Jesus, he said, do it like this. And so today as a community of faith gathered wherever we're gathered in worship today, around whatever devices we're worshiping on, we lift up this prayer known as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so we are getting ready to go into our second week. Last week we talked about praying, and I hope that our prayer life has continually grown over this past week and that we have found people to pray with and pray for and have others praying for us as well. Today we talk about presence, uh, the presence of ourselves in a worship service in being in, uh, uh, with the body of Jesus Christ. Because, see, that's how God intended presence to be. Whenever he formed his church, he said, I am the body, you are the branches. And, and I want us to think about that as we go through the next few minutes, just focused in on, this pas on the passage of Scripture we're going to be talking about, is how Jesus is the body of the church. And how each and every one of us have a different part and a different piece in playing an instrumental role in the body of the church as a whole. Now, we think of our body, physical body, is when we have everything in tune. Whenever we're feeling great, when we're eating right, we're exercising, we're doing all the things that we're told to do. How our body functions. Our body will react to different things in different ways, different foods in different ways, exercise in different ways. We get better, bigger, stronger, faster. We are better together as a whole, as a body. And that is no different in the church life of presence, of being present, whether it be in a worship service, a Bible study, a small group, out into the community uh, witnessing, whatever it might be, but as a whole, using our gifts and talents, and we'll get to that next, in the next few weeks, but the presence, being a presence in the community is vital to the church. Your gifts, your talents, my gifts, my talents, we all put those together and we form one strong unit. But what happens whenever the, something or someone is missing? It takes away from the wholeness of the body of Christ. It takes away from the wholeness of the church. And we, we miss out on something. I mean, think about it. Whenever you're injured or whenever you're not feeling well, something is missing and we try to restore it and bring it back. 
And that's where we're at as far as the presence of the church. In Acts 2, 46, 47, I, I love this passage in Acts because Acts is the first church. Jesus promised Peter. He says, I'm going to build my church upon you. And the day of Pentecost comes. And all these people are talking in their own native tongue. And Peter says, he boldly stands up and says, this is the church, folks. This is what Jesus was talking about. He baptized 3,000 in one day. And people started flocking to know who Jesus was. That is the reason we come to a church service. That is the reason you're joining online today, is to find out about this Jesus person and how Jesus is a part of our lives still today. And in, and in Acts chapter 2, verses 46 through 47, it's talking about the church as a whole, the presence of the church as a whole in the community. And it says, They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple followed by mills at home, every mill a celebration, exuberant and joyful, as they praised God. People in general liked what they saw, and every day their number grew as God added those who were saved. Salvation is the end goal. We've talked about that multiple times. Why is it so important for the presence of people in a worship service? Because we are growing together physically, mentally, emotionally, definitely spiritually. And when someone or some people are missing, we, we have a concern. Because just like our physical bodies, whenever something is missing, a nutrient is missing, or a limb is missing, or an organ is missing, or shutting down, we become weaker, where we can become stronger in having people and the presence of people growing together in a worship service. Now, I'm going to give you some statistics here that are going to scare us about the presence of people in church today. I, I did a little research today, and, and according to an e Missourian article that was written in our local paper here in Washington, Missouri, this past week, it, it, it taken from the Gallup poll, according to Gallup, in 1937, when they first measured formal membership in houses of worship, some 70% of Americans had a formal church membership and that measure remained steady for the next 60 years until it began a steady decline in 1998. And in 2020, formal membership in houses of worship stood at 49%. It's gone from 70% in 1937, which stayed that way until 1998. And beginning in 1999, we have declined in membership in churches, someone saying, I'm affiliated with a church to grow that church all the way down to 49%. Here's another one from Pew Forum of 2019. Over the last decade, the share of Americans who say they attend religious services at least once or twice a month dropped by seven percentage points, while the share who say they attend religious services less often, if at all, has risen by the same degree. That's a 14% swing in the last year of people who say they don't go to church at all. And for the first time ever, less than half of Americans, 47%, say that they belong as members of a local church. That is according to Gallup of 2020. According to the National Congregation Study of 2019, 68% of all evangelical churches in the United States have a congregation with less than 100 people, including children, and half of those churches have less than 50. Another stat from Barna, and this is a scary one. 60,000 churches or 20% of all churches in America could close within the next 18 months. The COVID-19 pandemic will bring a fundamental change in the way Americans attend church. That was according to Barna of 2021. Now, I don't say those. I say those as facts and stats. I don't say those as to scare people. Or maybe I am. Maybe I'm saying that our relationship with Jesus has to get better. We are missing people. People are drifting away. In, in, in the pandemic that is now known as COVID-19 has seen a dramatic decrease in people 
uh, attending in-person worship services. It has seen a dramatic increase in people like what we're doing right now of attending online worship services and worshiping God. And praise God for technology so that we can worship together. We can be together in a worship service. And, and again, praise God for technology because hopefully part of our, um, our relaunch Next week, we'll be coming to you as a live stream at 9.30. This will not be on a tape delay basis. You will actually be a part of the worship service. We're working really hard on that. And we, we're running into a couple technical snacks. So hopefully next week is when we launch it. But soon, I can tell you that much right now, coming soon, we will have the opportunity of worshiping online and in person all together. That's cool. That's great. But those numbers don't lie. But one thing I can tell you this right now. The church, Jesus' church, the one he designed up, will never go away. People will go away. But Jesus will not go away from our lives. I want you to hear that again. Jesus, Jesus will remain with us forever. It's our opportunity to become in a relationship with him while gathering and fellowshipping, whether it be online or whether it be in person, the presence of people is important. Now, the, we may, some may even ask, why is the presence of Jesus important in my life? The presence of Jesus is important because Jesus is the miracle in all of this. Jesus was a miracle worker. He, pre he presented himself so many ways in miracles in scripture that we can read. But he is presenting himself as a miracle in our own lives that we're even getting up and praising him and worshiping him today. Now, I want you to think of something as we get ready to go through the passage of scripture that has been picked out in 1 Corinthians today, where Paul is writing a letter, or 2 Corinthians, my bad. Paul is writing a letter to this church in Corinth. And he, he's giving, he's laying out a challenge, and he could be laying out the same challenge to us today as far as the presence, our presence. And some of you who are joining online have been saying, hey, I've been joining online since uh, the pandemic started. Thank you, God, for you being here and, and worshiping online today. You are part of the worship service. You are part of bringing uh, the breath of the Holy Spirit into our world. So don't discount that. Now what I'm getting ready to ask you to do, I want you to think of three people, three people, just three, that you wish were worshiping with you today. Whether it be online or in person, someone that was sitting next to you that you have missed over the course of the last couple of years even? Who is something that you wish, who is someone you wish you could see? Three someones you wish you could see. And then we're going to come back to that here in a few minutes, okay? I want to read this passage of scripture to you that Paul has written to, um, to the people in Corinth, to the church in Corinth, but he's definitely writing it to us today. And it's going to be... Um, called an open door. See, Jesus is ready to open doors. Matter of fact, the doors are open. We just have to go through them. The doors of churches are opening. Go through them. The doors of churches online are opening. Go through them. And what he's encouraging all of us to do in this letter is to go through the open door that Jesus is providing to the people. So that we can get back to that church, uh, the first churches of Acts, where they worshiped together, they fellowshiped together, they ate together, they had a lot of great things going on, and they added to their number daily. Not decreased in their number of the facts that I just read you. So here it is. Um, we're going to be in chapter 2. We're going to start in verse 12. Paul says, when I arrived in Troas to proclaim the message of the Messiah, I found the place wide open. God had opened the door. All I had to do was walk through it. But when I didn't find Titus waiting for me with news of your condition, 
I couldn't relax. Worried about you, I left and came on to Macedonia province looking for Titus and for and a reassuring word on you. And I got it. Thank God. In the Messiah, in Christ, God leads us from place to place in one perpetual victory parade. Through us, he brings knowledge of Christ. Everywhere we go, people breathe in the exquisite fragrance. And because of Christ, we give off a sweet scent rising to God, which is recognized by those on the way to salvation. An aroma redolent with life. But those on the way to destruction treat us more like the stench from a rotting corpse. This is a terrific responsibility. Is anyone competent to take it on? No. But at least we don't take God's word, water it down, and then take it to the streets to sell it cheap. We stand in Christ's presence when we speak. God looks us in the face. We get what we say straight from God and say it as honestly as we can. So, we look at that passage of Scripture, and I just love the passion that Paul has for this church in Corinth. He, he is basically saying, when I got there, and there were, I was waiting for Titus to give me a report. When I couldn't find Titus, I became worried. Now, it says in Scripture, do not worry, in Matthew 6, 20, uh, 23, 25. Matthew 6, 25, it says, do not worry. Paul says, I was worried about the church. I was worried about where you were, where you've gone, what are you worshiping, who are you worshiping? And I think that he is speaking that to us today. Paul would be saying to the churches of wherever, I am worried about you. Where have you gone? What are you worshiping? Jesus is opening the door for salvation a time of forgiveness and repentance. He is offering that to us today and saying, come back and have that relationship with me. And he's saying that on so many different levels. Many people will say, well, I don't want to go back to church because of, and they fill in the blank. And Jesus is saying, get rid of the excuses and come be a part, whether it be online, whether it be in person, but come together for fellowship with me. And Paul is saying that, and, and, and I, again, I love his passion towards Titus. I couldn't find Titus, I got scared. Where's Titus? And what's the report of the church? And when I found him, what does he say? I said, thank God I found Titus, and thank God for this church. And I say the same thing, I thank God for, for this church of, of First Washington. I thank God for the churches. I thank God for the, the pastors and the priests and the rabbis that are, are pouring into people today. No matter where in this world they are, they are pouring into people and they're asking that same question, where is so-and-so? Where is this person? I know I do it on a regular basis, and why? Not because we're looking for church numbers or attendance numbers. We're looking for the fellowship. We're looking for the fellowship, and we're looking for the, the growth together in Jesus. And he says this today, uh, that it is us because of Christ, because of Christ, not because of us, because of Christ and his presence in our lives. Jesus is the miracle worker. Jesus is the miracle worker in our own personal lives. Jesus is the miracle worker in our communities. Jesus is the miracle worker in our churches, our small groups, our youth groups, our children's ministry, wherever you are getting attached and, and fellowshipping in. And if you haven't, then I encourage you to do so. Because that growth will bring together our presence together. He says, because of Christ, we give off a sweet, sweet scent rising to God, which is recognized by those on the way of our ultimate goal, salvation. And it's only because of Jesus that we get to do this. It's only looking back at the miracles that he performed. It is only looking back at all of the times in which he took time that is recorded in Scripture to be with people, such as ourselves, people that were happy at times and he would joyfully celebrate, people who were down on their luck that he would sit there and talk to, people who were uh, hurting 
physically, that he reached out and touched and performed a miracle. People that were blind, he made to see. People that were deaf, he made to hear. People that were mute, he made to speak. And today he's doing that in our churches. And for some reason, we're looking for other places to find the answers. And you may be saying, well, Troy, you're preaching to the choir here, really, because we're here all the time. Yes, and that's the reason it's important for us to think of the three people that are missing in our lives. He comes back and he says, it is because of God's presence and Christ's presence. When we speak, we speak boldly of who Christ is in us. This entire week here at this particular church of First Washington, you and I are going to get tremendous, tremendous opportunities of being the hands and feet of Jesus. As Tuesday, we're working at a place called Harmony House. If, if you're a person who likes to get your hands dirty and you've got the time between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. at Harmony House in Washington, we're going to be there. We're landscaping, cutting grass, moving uh, twigs back, cutting down brush. We're going to be doing a lot of different things. And we would love for you to be a part of that. If you can't, then we ask you to be a, 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 a people in prayer. We've got, like I said, several different prayer walks that we're going to be doing in and around the community over at this new South Point school that, we're, uh, that is right across the, the street from us. We thank God and praise God that that is right across the street because it's going to be bringing families. We, you know, we've lived out here on St. John's Road uh, in the outskirts of St. John's Road for a long time by ourselves. We are happy to see people come into our community and be a part of our community. And so we're going to be praying over that. We're also going to have, you know, Tim. I said Tim Mazel's coming in. Tim and I are just going to be talking about his testimony, faith in Jesus. We're going to be talking about opportunities of, of relating to each other and relating to the world. We're going to have an opportunity for baptism. If you've never been baptized in the faith, as you heard, the first church, the first church that Peter assembled together, in one day he baptized 3,000 people. What a ministry milestone that would be. What a miracle in Jesus that is. And we're going to have the opportunity, if you've never been baptized, of full immersion in a pool by a makeshift beach, and we would love for you to participate. And before that, we're going to have food and have a picnic and eat and have a fellowship together. We're going to have the opportunity of going back and seeing an 80s classic, uh, Back to the Future, and doing it as a family for relationships and connections. We're going to have the opportunity of you coming, if you've lost someone or something, if you've lost your job, if you've lost a person, if you're grieving the loss of whatever that is, we're going to have what we call Hope Night on Saturday, August 14th. It's a free dinner beginning at 5.30 p.m., and it's a delicious dinner. I saw the, I saw the menu. Trust me on this one. If, if you've lost somebody and you want to come, all you have to do is go on the website and register for your seat so that we know you're coming. And then we're going to have a presentation of people who have lost people, who have lost their jobs, who have lost relationships, and who are growing together in Jesus, and that there is a hope in Jesus Christ. We're not going to water it down. We're going to bring it to you boldly, the gospel of Jesus. And so now I come back, as we wrap this up today, why presence is so important. Presence allows us to grow. And some of us say, I don't know anything about the Bible. Hey, join the crowd. I, I was there too. Not too long ago. Didn't know much about the Bible. Therefore, I came and I learned. And I'm, I'm encouraging you to do the same thing. Some of us have been saying, you know, I know the Bible inside and out. Great. Share that with us. Share that with others around us. Some of us are up here on our spiritual level. Some of us are right here on our spiritual level. Some of us are right here on our spiritual level. Some of us are just trying to find the door that God is opening. The door is open. The door is open to online worship services, in-person worship services, 
I don't think you, I, I, a matter of fact, I know that this would thrill God more than anything is to see that relationship being built through all of us. So let's go back to those three people. The three people that you have on your mind. Wouldn't you like to be worshiping with them today? Here's what I encourage you to do right now. Is to pull out your phone. Because you probably have their number. And if you don't have their number, if you have their address, write them a card. All you have to say is send them a text right now saying, I'm thinking about you today. I miss you. I'm praying for you. I'm, I, and maybe even I love you, whatever you want to put there. What that's doing is that's opening a door for you to ask them to come and worship with you next week. Come, come worship with me. And maybe some of you are saying, I'm homebound, or I live way far away. Tell them to join on here at 930 next week with you. That they're going to be worshiping God with you. Now, for many, they'll say no. I get that. I used to be a salesman. I always said that for every no, you're getting closer to a yes. <laughs> Anytime I would try to, I, I used to sell doors and windows. And I, I, every time someone would say, no, we're not interested in that contract for this particular house, but check us out the next time. Continue to ask. Continue to give them your Jesus. Because what's going to happen is sooner or later they will say yes. Matter of fact, again, right now, just text somebody. Just tell them, hey, I'm missing you. I'm praying for you. And then when they respond back, say, would you feel like worshiping with me next week? And if it's online, fantastic. It's in person, great. Next week, we're going to have our 930 service. And again, we're crossing our fingers. We're praying. We're hoping that we'll be coming to you live streaming next week if all the little technical gadgets get fixed. But if not, it'll be, it'll be soon. But come worship with me. I'm going to do the same thing. I've already got three people in my mind. Matter of fact, I've got about ten people in my mind. But let's just start with three. And the reason for three is because of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's bring them back. Let, allow God to use you. I, I'm going to allow God to use me to be his vessel of encouragement, his vessel of saying, come back, be a part of this relationship with me. For some, there's going to be a lot of them where they're going to say, Ch churches have turned me off. Uh, somebody did something or said something um, in this church that made me irritated. Tell them it's not God's fault. Come back and have that relationship with God. Be a part of what Jesus has to offer. People are going to make mistakes. People are going to say things that are, are off the cuff or hit people in a, in a way in which they take it maybe the wrong way, maybe it was meant to be the wrong way, whatever. It wasn't Jesus or God's fault. So come back. Presence is necessary. Our presence is necessary. Jesus' presence is necessary in our lives so that we can see the miracle and that we can recognize the door that is open to each and every one of us. Now let us go to the Lord in prayer. God, I thank you so much for Paul's concern. Paul's concern for this church in Corinth. Paul's concern for an individual named Titus. Paul's concern about the report he was going to get. I thank you for his boldness his faithfulness, his love for the churches, his wanting to spread the gospel. Lord, may we be like that. May we reach out to those who, who have put church as a distant second, third, fourth, tenth on the priority list, that they be present, that they come to know Jesus in a way, that they come to know others who are, who are all on this journey of life together, Spiritually, may, they, may we all find a commonality of being 
on that journey for you. Lord, your mission field is huge. And God, I just pray for the people that are being asked to come back, that they will have open minds, open hearts, that they'll take anything, the, the distractions of the past, and say, you know what, I'm going to make this a priority. Uh, that I'm going to come back to church. That I'm going to maybe even give it a try for the second or third or fifteenth time. Lord, may we then also, as a church, have as much passion and concern as Paul did for that church of Corinth. May we have as pastors, as priests, as rabbis, as leadership teams of churches, we have that much passion and compassion for the churches, for the people that will be coming. And that God, your church grows just like that church in Acts did where everybody, everybody got together and worshiped you and enjoyed fellowshipping together and enjoyed the common goal of salvation in you. Lord, that is my prayer today, and I pray that you hear it. I pray that you'll bless it, and I pray that you will bless our churches and our communities, your churches, your communities around this world. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen. If you would, please stand if you're able. If you want to just uh, sit at your, at your uh, device and sing this next song that we've got coming to you, uh, knowing that your presence today, your presence, maybe you heard something today, that your presence means something. Your presence here online worshiping God with us today truly, truly means something to God, to yourself to your community, and to your church. Let's sing. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. Are here working in this place? I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship. Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker. Keep a light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I hear touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you, 
have been blessed by these words of Paul in 2 Corinthians. We would love for you to be a part of that. I'm inviting you, each and every one of you, to join us again next week, and we'll keep you updated on whether we're going live stream or whether we will be taped, but we're shooting for the live stream. Pray, if you, if you will, pray for that, that you'll be joining us in service live next week at 930. But if not, know that your presence whether online or in person, is such a blessing. Such a blessing to God, such a blessing to our communities, and possibly even a blessing to yourself. May you be blessed this week. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Gracious God, thank you so much for all that you have gifted to us. Lord, I just continue to pray for those that are going to be asking others, telling them maybe the conversation has already started just from a text message of, of saying, hey, I miss you, I'm thinking of you, and, and may those requests from these folks that are worshiping online today of, hey, will you join me in worship next week of God, may they be heard with open hearts open ears and an open mind, and may that person who is receiving that say, absolutely, I'll be a part of that. Lord, I just thank you so much for the opportunity of delivering your message so humbly today that I stand behind that cross and that these words were your words and that we didn't just hear them, but we go live them today. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, 
Amen. Know that uh, God loves you. Know Jesus loves you. Know I love you. I cannot wait to worship with you next Sunday. And I can't wait to worship with all the people that we're going to ask that are going to say, yeah, I'll go. I'll do that. So I'll see you next Sunday. Have a great week. Be blessed.